When it comes down to it, one of the reasons up until now that Donald Trump hasn't faced any justice is that he especially, but also a lot of the folks around him, are really reluctant to leave a paper trail. That they've been doing all of these shady things, maybe even illegal things, but they don't often put it down hard in writing on paper. And that's why the story that broke late last night, early this morning, is so devastating to Trump and has him and everyone else panicking. I I want you to watch this that really lays out the context. Stick with me till the end and then we'll break it down after. A new email obtained by the Department of Justice reveals Trump campaign officials in Georgia asked a group of fake electors for complete secrecy and discretion in what's being investigated is an attempt to overturn the results of the 2020 election. Joining me now is Michael Moore. He's a former U.S. attorney for the Middle District of Georgia. He's a partner at Moore Hall. Michael, thank you so much for speaking with us about this email. It's really quite a stunning email, and I wonder what stands out in it to you. You know, well, good morning. Uh, it, it is a stunning email in the sense that it's all sort of laid out in a playbook now for prosecutors to look at. I think what they'll have to consider is whether or not this idea of secrecy uh, was something criminal in and of itself, or was it just does it just sort of paint the picture of what was going on in maybe a broader scheme uh, to to uh, affect the outcome of the election? And, and, and by that, I, I mean this. You know. Um, there's a legitimate way to challenge an election, to challenge the electoral process if they want to do it. The, the problem here is that any time that a prosecutor sees somebody trying to act covertly, to act, try to act under cover of darkness, telling people to not talk about things, you know, that begins to sort of uh, give you an idea that there is some nefarious motive uh, behind uh, the, the, what may otherwise be a legitimate challenge. So it's, uh, it, it'll be up to the prosecutors to look at and sort of use this as one piece of a, of a larger puzzle. So this is in writing. I mean, this is an email, to be clear, right? So it's in writing, right. and it's telling these folks who would be fake electors actually to lie to security guards because there were some COVID restrictions. Right. If they go in there, they should say they're attending a meeting with two state senators instead of the reason that they're actually there. How problematic is that, and what could that mean legally? Well, I mean, it's sort of silly anyway to think that anybody's going to be able to keep their mouth shut. I mean, that's like asking, you know, milk cows in the barn not to moo. I mean, these folks going into the Capitol, that, it, it, that's that's nonsensical. The problem here that they have is that this is often what hangs conspiracies. This is what this is what gets people in corrupt processes in trouble. And that is that somebody is going to talk. Uh, you don't always have it laid out in a typed email. Uh, you know, for instance, you don't in a mob situation, you don't have an email from the big, big mob boss saying, here, I want you to be quiet. Uh, this would you happen to have some discussions there. The idea here is to show that this wasn't just a spontaneous combustion, but it was a plan all along by people who plotted uh, prior to January 6th to, to do whatever it took to make sure that the electors were not certified on that day. What do you think about that, Maggie? Why do you think the committee may be leading with this area? I, I think Abby's exactly right. I think that we heard Liz Cheney say in recent days that there was a conspiracy. And I think that the House members who were involved in the select committee believe they are going to be able to show that. That starts with showing that the people who you know rushed the Capitol, who mobbed the building, some of whom were talking about hanging the vice president, that there was a plan, that this wasn't just a spontaneous uprising of people, you know, who happened to be of like minds. And that has been missing in a lot of investigations of Donald Trump over several years is proving a conspiracy. And I think that that is a key goal of what you're seeing here. One of the other days. That is massive. Right now, what you're seeing is that the police, that law enforcement have confiscated private Trump mail, private Trump correspondence, making it very clear that whatever they were doing, they didn't want you to know about it, me to know about it, the media to know about it, police to know about it, anyone to know about it. And they were even willing to not only hide it, but have people affirmatively lie if they were asked what they were doing in Georgia. And this is big for a couple key reasons. One, this shows the intent behind a conspiracy. That it's not just that they did something, but that they were actively trying to hide it. And like they said in that clip, it shows that it's part of a plan. And critically, and the mob boss analogy there is perfect. Because up until now, we've often spoken about Donald Trump's crimes, whether political or business, as a mafia type thing, where Donald Trump 
and his people rarely leave a paper trail. So while you know some stuff is happening, it's really hard to connect the on-the-ground cronies to the crimes at the top. But this does it more than anything else. Police confiscating Trump mail has nailed him and his campaign like never before. This is the biggest proof of conspiracy yet.